Let's build some UTM tracking links to find your most profitable traffic sources, timestamps below, along with some other helpful links and resources, including a copy of our free UTM builder to make this entire process an absolute breeze. Now, if you're familiar with what Google Analytics looks like once you have your links and you know what the links are and you just need to create your framework and start making some links, here's the timestamps to skip ahead, skip the basics. Otherwise, here is why on earth you should go through this process. Now, we'll take a much deeper dive into analysis at the end, but here you can see I have a list of campaigns. These are the different promotions that we have going. And all the way at the end, once you set up e-commerce tracking, link in the cards in the description to a video that will help you with that, you'll be able to see the actual revenue per campaign. And we'll get to this at the end of this guide. We can also type in ad content, and now I can start to see the videos and the actual emails driving sales. So as an example, F14, I know this is a particular video. And then if I come down here, GBS number eight, this is the eighth email in a broadcast sequence and it's responsible for 190 bucks. And so creating simple tracking links gives you a lot of information. And luckily you don't have to do a whole lot of coding in order to get this to work. Although the e-commerce tracking can be a pain, but the UTM links luckily are simple. And this is what a UTM link looks like. So you can see we have a URL it has a bunch of information in it. And you're like, what on earth is all this stuff for? And then if we use a simple highlighter, you can see that we have five unique components that make up our UTM. And so these tell us where the link was shared, what type of traffic it was, what the campaign, what campaign it's for, what the primary keyword is, and of course, what is the specific post or ad. And so this is all information that you will manually add to the end of every one of your links, and all this information is sent over to Google Analytics. So now it's time to talk about what on earth do you put in each one of those slots. So once you go to Google Analytics, your analysis is actually helpful as opposed to just more information that makes things even more confusing with analytics. So link in the cards in the description to a full-blown Google Analytics guide. We're just going to 80-20 focus in on UTM links. Now, when it comes to creating your campaign framework, this is where you decide what to put in each one of those slots. So going back to our diagram here, here are a couple of examples of what you might put in your source and medium column. I'll get to some of the differences that we recommend versus what Google recommends, but spoiler alert, you can put whatever you want in there as long as you are consistent and as long as it makes sense to you there's no wrong answer because you're ultimately the one making these links. So whether you like our framework, you like Google's, you like somebody else's, what's most important is you choose one and you stick to it because Google Analytics is not retroactive. So especially when it comes to anything like you misspell something or you put it uppercase one place and lowercase another, two different things, and you're never going to be able to get them together. It's like two magnets. They just will not touch. So here's our free UTM builder linked up in the description. You don't have to use it. But what I do recommend doing is making a list of what your sources, mediums, and campaign names are going to be. Now, I quickly want to go over three differences that I recommend versus what you might see elsewhere. And mostly because I keep getting comments of people saying, well, that's not the way you're supposed to do it. Google says you're supposed to do it this way and I see it done that way. Again, it's just whatever makes the most sense to you. And as long as you're consistent, it really doesn't matter. So the first thing is source. I recommend having source, if you're doing any sort of email marketing, put email as your source and then have newsletter, broadcast, and automation as your mediums. Most other documentation out there puts broadcast or newsletter as the source and then puts email as the medium. Now, you'll see in a moment why I recommend doing this, but long story short, you're gonna be a lot happier that you have email as the source as opposed to the medium. I really don't understand why people insist on putting email as the medium, and you're probably wondering why I'm wasting your time with this. However, something that's not going to be a waste of time is your campaign. So this is where you need to look at your marketing efforts and decide how you want to structure, organize, and label your marketing efforts. So as an example, I recommend using a three letter code for each one of your funnels. So this diagram shows a landing page, a thank you page, a sales page, some email sequences, and then of course, ultimately the product. So everything that you're looking at on this diagram with the exception of the broadcast sequence at the end would be one campaign. 
This is one funnel. So each one of these funnels would have a three letter code. Now I realize it's a little confusing. So I'll jump back over to our campaign builder here and then I'll show you inside of my MailerLite account. So inside of MailerLite, we have all these landing pages and each one of these landing pages makes an offer and ultimately sells one of our products or services, right? And so each one of them starts with a three letter code. Now, bear with me here. This is going to make a whole lot of sense in a moment. And you're going to you're going to be happy that you come up with your own coding system. And so not only do all of our landing pages have a three letter code to let me know what funnel it pertains to, but we also do that with our email automations. So you can see here SFP, we have sent a couple of emails for this. And so I know that this is the automation for this landing page, SFP. And so it makes things a lot easier because when you just have three letter codes, Yes, it's not gonna make sense to anybody else, but that doesn't matter. As long as it's the same three letter code across everything that you do, you can come in and make your tracking links. And all I have to do is type in SFP here. And then when I go and make my links in the future, I will know that all of those links and all of those promotions pertain to that specific funnel. It makes it very easy to track everything. And then I also recommend coming up with codes for your content and your ads, but more on that when we actually go through an example. And yes, it can look OCD and it can look like a pain. When we get to analysis, you're going to see how easy just a simple, a simple coding system will make everything in your marketing. So let's go ahead and actually build a link. So hopefully you're still with me in that last section wasn't too boring and onerous. So comment below if that didn't make any sense. Spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to quickly convey that without this turning into uh, this is what Jason likes to do on his free time with Excel sheets and tracking links and whatnot. So you have three options. Number one, you can use the free tool from Google to create your UTM link. So you can just go to Google, type in UTM builder. You'll get to a tool that looks something like this. You put in your information and then at the bottom, it gives you a nice link. Now, of course, the problem with that is you have to fill that out every single time. So the second option is you can download the free tool in the description that I'm about to go through. And as you can see, we just have drop down menus based upon whatever you put in source, medium, and campaign. So it's really easy to go ahead and make a link real quick because all of your options are the same. And let's just say we're doing SFP here and our content's going to be F101 something like that, and we could drop in the URL and be done. I'll go through a full example in a moment. And then, of course, you can use your own tool. If you type, if you just search free UTM builder, there are lots of different tools out there. Obviously, I think ours is one of the better ones, but you can go ahead and build your own. But again, what's most important is you keep all of these consistent and they're always the same case. I just have a formula in here that makes everything lowercase so we don't screw things up. So as an example, let's say I'm going through my list of landing pages here and I want to promote our UTM builder that's linked up in the description. Let's make a link for the link in the description. It's a little meta, but anyway, so what I do is I go ahead and copy this link and then I jump over to our campaign builder or the Google ads tool. You go ahead and drop in your raw link. So you do need that. And then you'll select the source. Now I have a couple sources. Obviously we're gonna do YouTube. The medium is going to be organic because we're not promoting this or if we had in-stream or in-feed, those are for YouTube ads, right? And then for our campaign name, this is actually DTM. So I'll just type that in real quick. And then we'll drop down. We'll say this is DTM. And then for our term, I'd go ahead and leave that alone. I tend not to like to use terms. And then the code for the video you're watching right now is F101. And so now you see this link right here, we have blueprint.jasonwhaling.com, UTM, blah, 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 and then the question mark. And now we have the source is YouTube, the medium is organic, the campaign term is DTM, and the content ID is 101. And so this is the exact link that's in the description. Like that's, that's all there is to it. And now anytime someone clicks that link, all this information that it's on, that it was posted on YouTube, we didn't pay for, we're, we're not paying for views on that video, and it's promoting this particular offer, DTM, which is the UTM builder, and the video is F01, the one, F101, the one you're watching right now, all that information is automatically sent over to Google Analytics. No, nope, no more coding. As long as Analytics is on your site, all that information is sent over. And so that is literally all there is to it to creating your UTM link. So really coming up with your source medium campaign and, and how you're going to name things, that's gonna be the time consuming and annoying part. After that, it's just 
drop it in and, and get to sharing. So if you have any questions or this is still confusing, go ahead and comment below. I read and reply to every single one. Let's go through some analysis. So I am in a separate Google Analytics account from the first one here, because this one has more traffic. And this is a list of all of the links promoting these different landing pages inside of MailerLite. And so every time we promote one of these landing pages, we make a UTM link and all of these codes you'll see are the same that are inside of Google Analytics. And so this is why it's really important that your campaigns, the way you name your campaigns are consistent. So let's go ahead and go through one of our campaigns here. These all just happen to be promoted on YouTube. So let's do SFP, the Sales Funnel Playbook. That's one of the newer ones. And so when I click on it, it'll give me a breakdown of the different sources and mediums. Now, obviously this is a YouTube channel and I pretty much only post on YouTube. So everything came from YouTube, but if we had other sources and mediums, they would show up here. So here's where it gets really, really nice. So I can come over here to secondary dimension and I will type in ad content. So remember ad content is the last column in our campaign builder. So that's the last element or component that we could add. And you'll see here, we have a listing of some different ad contents here. And in this particular instance, each one of these represents a video. And so now if I want to know which video is driving the most traffic, I can come in here and say, okay, well, if I want more traffic, I should make more videos like F62 and less videos like P14. Now P14 was actually posted like two weeks ago. So it's not really a fair comparison. You do have to, you know, remember when you posted these things, but it becomes really easy to figure out what type of content you should be making or what types of emails you should be sending when you have this level of information. And so just to show you, if you do do e-commerce, if you do, that's a, t t gosh, <laughs> if you do use e-commerce tracking, uh, I'll link up in the cards and the description, should have cut that part out, but anyway, I'll link up in the cards and the description to a, a video from the Analytics Mania channel that actually goes through how to make Google Analytics events. And that's where you're going to be able to start to see the revenue column. So that is advanced and does take a while to set up. But just as an example here, if I jump into this campaign and I have e-commerce tracking set up, you can see we have organic, we have our email broadcast, and then we have some cross promotion with one of our membership websites. And so if I come down to secondary dimension and I type in ad content again, now I can start to analyze what are the videos that are, that are actually driving traffic. So we can see here, these are videos on YouTube. And then you can see up here, we have a broadcast email similar to what we showed in the beginning that actually contributed to some sales. And so this is also why I recommend doing email as your source and then broadcast newsletter or automation as your medium. So going back to our funnel diagram here, you can see we have something called a rapport sequence. So this is an automated sequence that shows up right after someone joins our email list. So landing page, five or, the first five or seven emails are all automated. And so this is an automation. And then at the very end, we have the broadcast. This is just emails that are sent out pretty much forever, right? And so it's important for us to know, did the sales come from that first sequence that, that we set up automatically, or did it come from the second sequence, which is just our, our general broadcast list, right? And so that's why I recommend having your mediums for your, particularly for your email as broadcast newsletter or automation. Obviously you can do things, whatever makes the most sense for you, but this is kind of how I recommend doing it because it makes things a heck of a lot easier to analyze later on in the back end. As you can see, GBS eight, this lets me know that the sales came from the broadcast sequence. And sadly, none of the sales came from the first sequence, right? So then that lets me know, well, for some reason our first sequence isn't working, but our broadcast, is, our broadcast sequence is working. So maybe I stink at writing emails and I need to go fix all those. So hopefully that gives you some insights into the type of analysis you can do. And that's really all there is to it because once you've gone through this, you can clearly see the exact emails, ads, and, and videos and posts that are driving sales. And so the last section here is something that isn't inside of analytics and that is dynamic adaptation. And so I'll quickly go through an example just to, because this was a pain in the butt for us and we've actually had to do this several times. So one of the big advantages of doing things this way is you get to see all of your traffic. You know exactly where everything's coming from. But what happens when you need to change something, 
right? What happens when you need to rename a campaign? As an example, you can see we have UTM GA Builder and then we have DTM Advanced UTM Builder. Well, the number seven on this list actually replaced number one because it did better. But unfortunately, I have all of these videos that are still linking to the old landing page. And so I can come in here, click on add content, and now I have to go to each one of these videos. Oh, right, <laughs> now like how only two show up. So I have to go to all two of these videos, but sometimes the list is longer. All two of these videos and change the links. But if you use something called a short link, then you can use a third party software to house all this information for you. So instead of having all of your links, UT, all of your UTM links across the web, all of a sudden you put a short link in front of them, right? And then you just go to your short link software and you update that. And so if you're on WordPress, Pretty Links is a great solution. It's like 50 or hundred bucks a year and it will save you so much time and headache because now instead of going and trying to find every single post that you ever shared a link with, you can just go to your link shortening software. Bitly is another popular one, although it's way overpriced for what it does. Then you can just go to that software and update all your links inside there and you don't have to go tracking down or going to each individual YouTube video or blog post or podcast to switch out and update your link. So that's not relate, directly related to analytics, but it will help keep your link tracking uh, easier. It will help you with managing all of your links because you, as you can see, you're gonna have a lot of these links. So thank you so much for watching. Sincerely hope you got some value out of this video. Most importantly, I didn't get too OCD with the naming conventions and hopefully this will help you get really good insights from Google Analytics because this is free and it is so much easier to do marketing when you have this kind of information. So hit that like button, subscribe for more deep dive guides just like this one and ones that are a whole lot less OCD. And until the next, keep building the business you love. Thank you.